Today's Namaste Yoga is about Hanuman, the humble servant. Hello and welcome to episode 221 of Namaste Yoga. Today we continue our Hanuman series and we are talking about Hanuman, the humble servant. So I want to begin by thank you, thanking Dusky Leaf for our yoga props. And again, we're going to need a lot of them today. You're going to need, to need your mat and you're going to need a bolster if you have one. If not, you can use your rolled up mat or a rolled up blanket. Uh, you're going to need a chair today and a blanket. You may need your blocks and a strap too, but I think um, probably just your blocks. And thank you to Squeeze for my clothing. I'm wearing a bamboo long sleeve top. This is uh, one of my older bamboo long sleeve tops, and I, I love this one. It's so soft. And I'm wearing gray uh, moss green leggings today. And I want to start with a testimonial from Larry, who sent me these fabulous images of Hanuman for, from Varanasi. So they're really groovy because, see, they change. <laughs> and then this one's really cool because it's got Durga and Hanuman. Does it get any better than that? And then this is cool because a lot of people say that Tim and I are like Krishna and Radha. And, uh, you know, we're always sweet and in love and kind, just like them. Even when we're moving, we never argue. Never. <laughs> and then Durga, you know, because we just did the Durga series too. So it's really cool. So we're really looking forward to putting those up in some funky frames when we get to our new place in BC. And speaking of moving, I'm going to share. He has a, he said a lot of stuff, so we might share just a little bit of it. But... Because we're moving, we are going to have a moving sale. We have some DVDs that we don't want to trek across the country. So you'll want to be on our mailing list. If you go to melissawest.com, if you're not already on our mailing list, you can sign up there and you'll receive a free morning and evening video as well, digital downloads. But we are going to sell off our DVDs at rock bottom prices because <laughs> we just need them out the door. And we have some stock left of DVDs that we've just been kind of, you know, uh, letting the stock go down <laughs> because this is the digital age and all of you watch videos online. So <laughs> if you want some DVDs to give us gifts, so you know people that still have DVD players, this is your last chance. Or maybe, yeah, you want to take it with you when you go to the cottage or whatever like that, you know. You want a hard copy or something. So um, here's Larry's testimonial. He says, I am so impressed with what you and Tim have accomplished with Namaste Yoga. It's like a perfect storm in a good way. You are a great yoga teacher, competent and charming, and not afraid to communicate both what you know and you don't know. There's a lot more than I don't know than what I do know. I'll have to say, I agree with that. Tim does a fantastic job of putting the finished product together. Yay, props to Tim. So true. <laughs> Um, your area of expertise, media studies, yes, I actually did teach media studies at, at York University too, before I launched full-time into yoga, obviously helped you put together a great plan from the beginning. <laughs> this is so cute. I disagree with another viewer who says that your earlier programs were not as good. <laughs> from show number one, you have provided first-rate classes. The off-the-cuff nature of your shows, the informality, the willingness to laugh, improvise, make mistakes, and enjoy yourself all make the classes more enjoyable. Even though 
Tim is off camera, your relationship shines through in a great way. I have done many dozens of programs, both from the weekly podcast and the membership site, and have enjoyed them all, including classes with other students, classes you have done alone, and classes with guest teachers. Quality comes through in every show you have put together. And so um, he says a lot more, but I think I'll leave it at that for today so that we can get started with our class today on Hanuman, the humble servant. So thank you so much, Larry. It was a really sweet gift, and we, I appreciate all your kind words, and we just love having you as a member on our site, too. Okay, so to begin today, you are going to either start with your bolster or your yoga mat rolled up or your blanket rolled up, and I'm going to show you what you're going to do. So actually, a rolled bolster would be better than a flat bolster today. So um, Dusky Leaf is actu actually has a rolled bolster, in a round bolster in production, so that would be better than the flat bolster. So I'd actually encourage you to use your rolled bolster yoga mat. I'm just too lazy to do that right now. <laughs> so you're going to lie back over your round bolster or your rolled up yoga mat like this so that you've got a good chest opening happening here. Make sure your neck is supported so this is too big for me. It's not supporting my neck very well. So I would either put a rolled blanket under here to support my neck or take this lower with a rolled blanket. You're going to be here for a little bit while you receive the teachings today, so make sure you're comfortable in this supported chest opening posture to begin. Oh, and, and we have the heat on. It's not quite as cold here today. It's actually only zero, but we have to have the <laughs> it's, it's tropical for Canada, but for Ontario here. But it's, um, you know, the heater, the furnace has to be off so that it's not messing with our sound. So, take a deep breath in. And let it fall out of your mouth. And allow yourself to arrive here now to receive the teachings on Hanuman, the humble servant. And even as you arrive here now to allow yourself to take an attitude of service to your practice, allowing yourself to be taking take an attitude of humility as you enter into your practice space now. Hanuman is the personification of Dasya Bhav, the attitude of the servant. He started his life serving Sugriv the son of Surya, the god of the sun, and the ruler of the monkey kingdom. And as you all know, a little later in his life, he became the humble servant of Ram. It is said that this form of bhakti destroys the ego. Now Hanuman always performed his duties modestly, humbly, and with great devotion. He even chose not to marry so that he could devote himself entirely to the service of Ram. However, today I'm going to share with you a story where Hanuman actually did feel some pride for helping his beloved Ram. After saving Sita, Hanuman had received praise both from Sita and in a letter from Brahm, the god of creation to Ram, outlining all of Hanuman's success. So after this, even humble Hanuman felt a little twinge of self-gratification for his accomplishments. So in our story, after saving Sita, Hanuman decided to return to Ram. He went to the highest peak of Lanka, he grew in size, and repeated the mantra Ram and took a flying leap. He flew across the sky over the sea. When he reached the mainland, he was very thirsty, so he chose to land close to an ashram with a lake beside it. He approached a sage sitting beside the lake in meditation and asked if he may drink from the lake. 
The sage said yes. Hanuman carefully put down Ram's ring and went to drink from the water. While Hanuman was drinking from the water, one of the monkeys came out of the forest, took Ram's ring and placed it in the sage's water pot. When Hanuman returned, he asked the sage what happened to Ram's ring. The sage didn't murmur a word, but simply pointed to the water pot. When Hanuman looked inside the water pot, he was shocked to find that it was filled with rings that were exact replicates of Ram's. Hanuman asked the sage to tell him which one belonged to Ram. The sage broke his silence and told him that they all belonged to Ram. Hanuman was confused. So the sage explained, in each of the eons, known as Tretas, Hanuman would come and drink water from his lake and a monkey would drop a ring in his water pot. Hanuman was dumbfounded and asked how many rings there were. The sage simply smiled and told him to count for himself. Hanuman quickly realized there were too many to count. He then saw that he was not unique. In all of creation, one age follows another. Many others had come before him, and many others would follow after him. This experience was enough for Hanuman to release any pride that he had in his achievement. Later, when Hanuman saw Ram, Ram already had his ring on his finger. Ram explained that he had taken the form of the sage to help take away even the smallest bit of pride. Hanuman begged Ram to never let him fall, pride, fall prey to pride again, and Ram granted him this boon. So reflect on this story and see how it relates to your own life and how you may want to create the attitude of humility and release pride in your own life or the challenge of creating humility and releasing pride in your own life. And go ahead and form an intention for your practice today. So my overall intention for our practice today is to bring an attitude of service to our practice and an attitude of humility, to bring an attitude of humble service to our practice today. So see what it is that you are trying to create in your life right now and how your yoga practice could best serve you in creating that. And go ahead and form your intention for your practice. Once you've formed your intention, you can go ahead and wiggle and stretch out, bend your knees, roll to your side and come off your bolster. And then you can lie back down on your back and draw your knees into your chest as a counter pose to your big back bend there. If you have any knee issues, hold on behind your knees. So what does it mean for you to be a humble servant to your practice? And then go ahead and release your legs. And here you can pick up one of your blocks and place it between your knees for good alignment from your hips to your knees to your ankles and feet. Place your hands down by the side of your body. Press into your feet until your pelvis begins to lift off the ground, feeling your feet on the ground, feeling the strength of your legs. 
And just be curious about what it feels like to be in service of this pose, Hetu Bhandasana, bridge pose. Does it feel like to be in service of your legs? And then slowly lower down out of Setu Bhandasana. Just take a little pause here. And then let's do this pose again and ask yourself this time, what would it be like to do this pose as a humble servant of opening up your chest. So different intention. So pressing into your feet, allowing your pelvis to lift up off the ground. Interlacing your fingers and then walking your shoulders up underneath you. So what is it like to do this pose in service of opening your chest now? And slowly untuck your shoulders, lower yourself down. Place your block off to your side. And draw your knees into your chest. And let this be in service of counter, of, of being a counter pose. So in creating balance here. Then go ahead and release this posture from your body and we're going to make our way up onto all fours for cat pose. Just to warm up your spine a little bit more. I'm attached. Okay. So hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. So I had a question about this this week and what that means. So it basically means you look at your shoulders and you place your hand right underneath your shoulders and your hips, your knees go right underneath your hips. So wrong would be forward or like that. So we're back, and I'll do an, a whole video on that. I just thought I'd address it a little bit here as well. Or see how that's behind, so it creates poor alignment. And so straight underneath. Okay, so you're going to exhale, round up through your back. And inhale, and arch through your back, just warming up your spine a little bit. Okay, and from here you're going to 
come into lunge pose. So walk your hands back to your knees and come up to kneeling. And then walk your left leg through. So you're in lunge pose. Sink down through your front left foot and come upright. And actually, this is really hard underneath my knee, so I'm going to get a blanket. And since you have a blanket, available for your practice since I asked you to. You could grab your blanket too or roll up your mat underneath your knee. And then sink down through your front left foot and come upright for lunge pose. And in lunge pose, you're gonna use eagle's arm. So bring your right arm, actually use your left arm and hook your right arm underneath it. And then we'll do a little bit of a back bend here. So lift your arms up, tuck your tailbone under, and look up towards the ceiling. So what does it mean for you to be in service of your practice here? For me, it means to find my breath. And then release your arms down and take your hands on either side of your foot. Place your right hand on the ground and lift your left arm up. Reach and open that left arm up so you're opening your chest up. Keep your left leg hugging in towards your midline. And then release your left arm down and place your left hand on the inside of your foot and reach your right arm up. Reflecting on what it means to be in service of your practice here. And then slowly bringing your right hand down and walking your hands back. And we'll switch sides for a lunge pose so that you're going to walk your right leg through now. So step your right foot through, leaning into lunge pose on this side. And set the attitude of a humble servant here, sinking down through your right foot, coming upright in this pose. Bring your right arm up. Hook your left arm underneath it. Tuck your tailbone under. Lifting up into that back bend, finding rooting through your back left shin, your front right foot. And then release that down, coming down with your hands on either side of your right foot again. This time, take your left hand down to the ground, reach your right arm up.
And then bring your right hand to the inside of your right foot and lift your left arm up and just reflect on what it is to be in service of this posture. And then release your hands to the ground and you can step back and put your blanket off to the side. We're going to come into Adho Mukh Swanasan, downward facing dog. And from downward as the transition to come to standing. So you're going to take your hands under your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. Tuck your toes under, stretch out the necks of your toes. Inhale. Exhale. Straighten out your legs, lift your hips up towards the ceiling, dangle your head. So look forward at the space between your hands and then walk your feet to your hands. And slowly make your way up to standing. So from standing, you're going to need your block again. And we're going to do chair pose. Everybody's favorite. You're going to put the block between your knees and your upper thighs, actually. And this is, again, for good alignment between your hips, knees, and ankles. And think about what this pose is in service of. So it's in service of tapas, building discipline. But it's in service of strengthening your legs. So... If you go into it with that attitude of servicing your legs, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it'll be easier. So you're going to inhale, take your arms straight up, let your shoulders slide down your back, and sit down nice and low. And then inhale and come up. Let's try that again with just a little different arms. <laughs> Interlace your hands behind you. So let this be in service of opening up your chest. Relax your shoulders down and open your chest. Sit down, squat, and chest open. And then slowly whew, up to standing. <sighs> okay, put your block off to the side for now and come up to the front of your mat. We're going to do a variation of Virabhadrasan. One, so take a big step back with your right foot. This, is, this whole class is in service of your legs in a bit, in a bit of a way. Oh, that's, let me uh, take out my gift from Larry there. So my mat sticks to the floor. <laughs> and that's better. And uh, you're going to sink down through your front left sit bone because you've got your right leg back. Inhale, reach your arms up. And you're going to take your left hand behind and reach it around to the back uh, outside of your right leg. And then reach your right arm up and over towards your left side. So you got a little bit of a side bend going on here. A little bit of opening through your left shoulder. Okay. 
Okay. Go ahead and release this pose. Step up to the front of your mat. Take a deep breath in. Let it fall out of your mouth. Okay, and then we'll step your left leg back. And turn your hips to face the front edge of your mat. Sink down through your front right sit bone. So your front leg is coming close to parallel to the ground. Bring your right arms up and set your intention to be a humble servant of this pose. So this time you take your right arm to the outside of your back left leg and your side bending up and over towards the right side of your body. Keep rolling to the outside edge of your right foot. So you're rolling your right knee out. And then go ahead and let this posture out of your body. And of course, because this is about Hanuman the servant, we're going to do humble warrior today because Hanuman is the humble warrior. So you're going to take a step back with your right foot again. And so with warrior one, there's that maybe a little bit of pride that Hanuman felt. And then after he realized that he's really no special than anybody else that came before him or anybody else that came after him, there is that return to humility. So interlace your fingers behind you, relax your shoulders, open up through your chest, and then you fold forward over your bent left leg. And then go ahead and release this posture on this side. And we'll go ahead and set it up on the other side. So you're gonna step your left leg back. Sink down through your front right sit bone. And open up through your chest. Interlace your fingers, relax your shoulders, let there be ease and fold forward, humble warrior. Release this side from your body. Whew. <laughs> You're going to like what's coming next. <laughs> Whoa, that was the humble, Hanuman the humble servant, or what a great leg workout <laughs> video. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so what we're going to do now is legs up the wall or legs up a chair. And I'm going to show you how you can use your bolster for this too. So um, this is a little bit of setup, but it's worth it. You're going to, first of all, put your cap on your tea so you don't spill it. And then you're going to put your bolster beside you like that so it's there ready for you. And put your mat perpendicular to the wall. Gosh, it looks like I was sweating underneath my mat. That's crazy. Okay, then you're going to put your, hmm. 
Okay, so the way to come with your legs up the wall is to sit right at the edge of your mat and get your hips right up close. And then you're going to swing your legs around. So your legs out the wall. And then you've got your bolster right here. And what you're going to do is just bring it down. This is really fun to do with a mic. And the way you want to have that set up is so that your pelvis, it's kind of on your low back so that your pelvis tilts a little bit down. So, there. And then for this one, I want you to have your arms kind of like robot arms overhead so they're nice and relaxed. And we're going to stay here for about three minutes. So don't you don't need to obsess over your legs being flush to the wall because if you do, you'll be here forever trying to set up. So we're going to stay here for about three minutes for the sake of the length of our video, but I would encourage you to use your pause button on your video and stay here. You could stay here for 10 to 20 minutes. So it's really up to you. Once your feet start tingling, getting pins and needles and falling asleep, that's a good indication that you should come out. <laughs> Otherwise, you can stay. So our three minutes of video time is up and you could extend this time now for yourself or you can join us in coming out. You can, the way to come out of this pose is to bend your knees, place your feet flat on the wall and you only need to bend them a little bit. Press into your feet, lift your pelvis off the bolster, lift the bolster out of under, from underneath you and roll back down onto the ground. 
and then bend your knees and roll to your side. And make your way up to seated. And from here, we're going to use your bolster again or some folded up blankets and do a twist with the bolster. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so let me just put my mat back. So you'll either have your folded stack of blankets here or your bolster like this. And what you're going to do is kneel in front of it and take walk your knees to your left side and then lower your right hip down. And then you've got your left leg bent and I want your legs at a 90 degree angle. So you've got your left leg bent on top and your right leg on the bottom. And what you're going to do is take your right leg behind you so that's going straight down and your left leg is going to kind of stay there and then you're going to bend just rest over your bolster this is to make up for all that hard leg work i had you guys doing <laughs> And then we'll switch sides. So come back up onto all fours. Walk your knees over to the right side of your bolster, lower your left hip down. And so you've got two legs at a 90 degree angle. Your right one is on top, your left one is on the bottom. You're gonna take your right one straight down and leave your left one where it is. And then you're gonna lower your chest onto the bolster, looking to your right side now. And then slowly come out of your supported twist and you can put your bolster off to the side because we're done with your bolster. And it's so easy to be a humble servant in those supported postures, isn't it? So now you're going to need your chair. You've probably been wondering when we were gonna use that chair. And you're going to take your blanket on top of the chair Take your right leg straight underneath the chair. So you might need to move it forward on your mat a little bit more. Your left leg is going to be bent. And then what we're going to do is side bend over your right leg. Rest your head on the chair. And you're holding on to the back of the chair at the bottom and the top.
and then slowly come up and we'll switch the side that you have the chair on. So this time you bend your right leg and you place your left leg under the chair. And actually, if you had another blanket, it would be kind of nice to just put it underneath the, the bumpy parts of the chair. <laughs> and then you're going to reach up and over, over your left leg, resting your head on the chair. And this is in service of your quadratus lumborum, which gets really tight. And then go ahead and let this posture out of your body. And you can go ahead and rest back in Shavasana. If you've got your bo since you've got your bolster here or your rolled up blanket, you can go ahead and place that underneath your knees. And rest back to receive and integrate your practice. So reflect back on Hanuman, the humble servant, the attitude of Dasya Bhav. We have a whole series on our membership site of the five Bhav. And Dasya Bhav is just one of the five attitudes that you can cultivate in your life. And just notice what that was like to cultivate the attitude of a servant in your practice. I'd be curious if there is a life connection. Do you cultivate that attitude of service of a humble servant in your life? And what's one small thing you're going to take away from your practice today, off your mat and into your life? Once you form that intention of how you're going to integrate your practice today, go ahead and allow your breath to deepen. Begin to wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees. Roll to your right side. And slowly make your way up to seated. So thank you for joining me for episode 221 of Namaste Yoga. I'd love to hear your comments about cultivating the attitude of a humble servant and what that was like in your yoga practice and how you intend to take that off your mat and into your life. So leave your comments below. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.